Welcome back. Well, now that we've uh, turned the power on here, we can see what, what the rest of these switches do. Now, these appear to represent elevators. One going up, one going down. These elevators are on the first floor. I didn't point them out yet. Let's switch both of them on. And the final symbol represents the doors, which is on always. So, um, with the wheel uh, raised, we cannot get back the way we came. But, since the doors are working now, we can just go out the door. Unfortunately, we appear not to have uh, the required level of key to get through the inner doors. We can only use the doors in the hallway. Now well, we're back at the crack in the wall. And we can just fall down here. Apparently we're invincible. Doesn't matter how far we fall down. We'll always be fine, always land on our feet. Even better than a cat. Well, let's see if we can find those elevators. There's actually two elevators. One of them uh, leads up, and the other one leads down. The one that goes down is immediately uh, in front of the entrance. And this one is the one that goes up, which is on the other side of the building. Which I suppose is for security. Make sure that in order to go up, you need to go across the building. This whole place is all about security. Now we're on top of the, the building, and it turns out the entire building is rotating. We thought it was the wheel that was rotating, but it was in fact the wheel that was stationary. And the building itself is rotating. It also explains the, uh, the moving shadows we saw back uh, down at the beginning, which is down there. It's not the sun that's moving, it's the building. On the other side we find the elevator back down, which we're not going to use that now, right now. And over there is another building, also rotating. And we need to get to that second fortress. It's an imposing looking building. And uh, we can get there using this walkway over there. Now comes one of the most annoying bits of the game, in my view. So we're gonna have to do some uh, precision jumping. Because in order to get to the other fortress we need to get onto one of those moving walkways. And to do that we need to use this platform that's in between. Which means that I need to jump onto that platform from uh, from here. And I'm not always successful at that, but I am now. And now that I'm here, I can uh, save our location using this journey cloth. So that even if I fall down now, I can just link back here and try again. Well, while we're waiting for the other side to rotate, Let's look down here, because over there is the journey door. But there's no sense going through the journey door before we found all the journey cloths. So first let's go to that other fortress. I need to wait for the bridge to get here and then make another one of these precarious jumps. One of the things I don't really like about Uru is the uh, over-reliance on jumping. It's especially bad in this age. Oh, I made it. I 
And it's annoying because if you fall, you will link back to uh, Relto, and then you have to link back here and suffer through all the loading times. So, now we've arrived at the second fortress. Again, these fixed stone walls, lots of security. Well, it opens up automatically, thanks to our key. We get in there. It seems to work like it's an airlock. It's double doors. More security. These people are really obsessed with security. And now we are inside the second fortress. And I'm not entirely sure which side of the building we've arrived on. Because they all look the same. And the building is rotating, so every time I do this I would end up in another place, probably. Well, we can walk around the building on a, in a hallway, or we can go towards the center. So well, let's first check out what's over here. We've arrived in uh, a room. It looks like a conference room. Over here is uh, a map. And this is actually a map of this fortress. This is the the hallway that leads around the fortress with the six doors. You can tell it's not riven, because things don't always come in fives. And there's uh, six different rooms. Right now we're in one of these conference rooms. There's two conference rooms, and of the other types of rooms, there's also two of those. Don't know what that's for yet. I don't know what this is a diagram of. But I think it's a diagram of that huge wall that's in the center of this room. What could all that be for? We also find a Barrow linking stone, but because I don't have any uh, linking cloths inside the second fortress yet, I'm not going to use it yet. And we find a notebook here. And this notebook contains some information about the key. Well, let's uh, read that notebook. I hope I have enough time in the remainder of this video. The key. Base functions. Dundee number 3 on the backside of all these devices. Three functions? Or certainly more than that. Three core functions. In any case, it's a convenient name. Key. 1. Nexus interface. The Nexus seems to be just an interpreter for key data. Keys allow users to provide or decline book access to other keys. I think we can make this work for neighborhoods as well. H names defined in the key appear in the Nexus, or should. 2. Interpersonal communication. Obviously the most important function. Voice or text communication to other key users. Inter or inter-H, it doesn't seem to matter. 3. Image capture. Capture. Storage and transfer. A single button press captures an image and stores it within an appropriate H directory. Images can be sent to, an, to other keys as well as uploaded to some imagers, depending on versions. Seems main servers coordinated this functionality. Might be tough to revive. 4. Journal entry, storage and transfer. Fairly simple. Write notes and store them. Again, server handles transfer journal. Key to key and key to imager. 5. Markers and the ability to drop and collect markers. At the operator's present location in an age. Layers of functionality here. Requires more research. Perhaps this feature could be tapped to help with the grade zero problem. GZ stands for grade zero, I'm just gonna say that. Interesting. Six, doors. In this age, the key, even at its most basic level, opened level one doors. Level two and three require higher versions. There's much more variety to these devices than we first suspected. The dispenser is capable of handing out at least five versions and possibly more. Feature set varies widely. There must have been a system to control and track these devices. Where? Imager built into the unit is surprisingly compact and efficient. Uses the same blasted lattice compressor system, for lack of a better word. 
Have to crack that. Powerful projection for something that fits on the top of a hand. Markers. Purpose. Perhaps a training tool for maintainers. Markers could be set up in recruits and or lower ranks. Run through the course. Interface. Keys interact with markers in three ways. Team capture. Once all the markers are placed, there are two teams that can collect markers. The key registers the marker to the respective team. Markers can vanish after a time limit or after all have been registered. Markers must be in same edge. Test. Can markers be reset? Okay, well I um, cannot f quite finish this in this video, so I'll read the rest of this very short notebook in the next video. Don't skip that video because I'll continue uh, playing after that.